Well, welcome back to my blog. I wanted to talk a little bit this week, since it was a slow week at the Capitol, uh, basically about the building. A few years ago, back in the 90s, the legislature decided to appropriate some money to fix up both the House and the Senate chambers in preparation for the centennial. So the money that was allocated was used to remodel this building and help out with restoring the House chamber and the Senate chamber back to the original look. Now, most of it has stayed the same with the speaker's presiding chair and the dais still here in the front and the member's desk out here. But it's amazing the difference of what we've seen as far as the changes. In fact, the floor here is elevated a few inches off the ground where it's a false floor where wires run and allow each of the desks to be wired up for phones and a computer system. The seal that is still here at the front was carried over from the original chamber as well as some of the lights and the fans that are on the walls. But if you were here in the old days, you would see the carpet was solid green, the walls were solid yellow, and as they started remodeling and looking at the pictures from the old days, they realized that that had changed significantly. In fact, up the stairs and the skylights on the roof, those were covered up completely, as well as the windows in the gallery. So when they started looking at the old pictures, and realized how beautiful this chamber really was, they decided to try and re basically replicate the original intent for the chamber to look as beautiful as it did back in the old days. So when they went through, they remodeled, they took off the false ceiling, they took off the false walls, uh, they painted the walls white. It's kind of funny, the walls used to be yellow, as I said, and they had grown more and more yellow over the years because of age and smoking in the chamber, uh, dirty spots as it yellowed and so as they looked at the pictures they realized they were supposed to be white and they changed it back to the original color so the chamber now is much more beautiful than when I was here on staff and in the early days when I was coming here in college in Oklahoma Intercollegiate Legislature. One addition that I felt was a very good choice to make was the glassed in area for the gallery. The glassed in area is for students and classes to come up here for the teachers to visit with their classes about what's going on, on the floor so they don't have to hold their voices down while we're in session. It's easy for them to hold normal conversations, talk about the bills and talk about the process. The upper glassed in area is where the press will sit and you'll see the print media will be over to the far right and then the radio media will be in the middle and then the TV cameras are on the far left. So the design of this chamber has been fantastic as far as operating and conducting our business. And then the gallery, it's always open to the public where individuals can come and sit and watch the proceedings of the legislature day to day. And we have plenty of seating here. It rarely fills up, usually on the day of the state of the state or if there's a special event going on. So it's been an amazing experience to be able to work here and to be a part of the history of the Oklahoma legislature. I want to take you around to some of the other parts of the building and show you some of the things that are the hot spots here in the Capitol. If you come and visit, you certainly need to check out. Now, as you walk out into the fourth floor rotunda from the House Chamber, you'll see basically the main area, the main opening for the floor that's designated for the legislative branch. Now, we have this hole in the floor that goes all the way down to the first floor, and then you can just look around and see the beautiful artwork. Now, up top, the four paintings that are up here are history in the making, basically. If you look back at what was the early days of our history, starting up here with the land run and then going around, you'll also have four pictures, four portraits, designating four of Oklahoma's most important historical figures. You can see Jim Thorpe and Bob Kerr over here, and you can't see Will Rogers and Sequoia, but as you walk around, you'll see the main thing. But one of the additions that's been done over the years, there has been an arts commission that has worked to put different paintings in place. So when I first started on staff, we only had these four paintings, and then the ones up top, and then the one back here, which is the World War I Memorial. And that is important to see, because if you go in each of the committee rooms that are designated for the House and the Senate, you can see two portraits that are the size of the wall, and they have the names of all the Oklahomans who died in the service of the military during World War I. And those were commissioned by Frank Phillips. And if you look at the one in the house side, the shrouded figure in the painting is pointing to one of the names and it has the last name Phillips. So I'm assuming 
there's a tie there, there was a reason for it, but that's just one of the things we've lost through history that I hope somebody will check out someday and verify. But I cannot convey how beautiful it is here, especially now with the work that's been put in, to put the different smaller paintings in, like Woody Guthrie, uh, like Wiley Post, like Carl Albert, the former Speaker of the U.S. House of Representatives. Uh, you even look up to the fifth floor and you can see a painting of ballerinas who toured the world who were from Oklahoma, from a tribal uh, culture, and communicated not only the message of the ballet and the arts, but also the significance of their history with their tribal heritage. So, as you look down on the fourth floor, there are different metal plates that describe each of those paintings. So you can tell exactly what went into that painting, what is the significance of it, who painted it, and just the history and the reasons why. Now as we move on over to the rest of the building, you'll get to see some of the other parts and we'll take you on a behind the scenes tour over in the Senate now. All right, now we're on the Senate side and I want to show you some of the features here. You'll have 48 desks, uh, one for each senator who represents the state of Oklahoma from their different districts. And the senators will come in here and conduct their business just like we do with the House. In the House, the representatives have to share a desk. So two members to every desk will have 50 out on the floor, but each senator gets their own over here. And then you'll see in the back of the Senate chamber the pictures for the governor, the president pro tem of the Senate, who is the presiding officer, the lieutenant governor, who serves as the president of the Senate, just like the vice president of the United States serves as the president of the U.S. Senate, and then the president of the United States. Now, as you look around and see the different parts of the chamber, their colors are more red, or ours are more of the green nature, and that's carried over in historical precedents, from what I've been told from the early days from the British colonies as they came from Great Britain. Now, up here is the presiding officer's desk, just like we saw in the House. Uh, the presiding officer will sit up here and conduct the daily affairs of the Senate, uh, preside as the bills are brought up and they will go through the questions on the bills and then debate on the bill and then the vote and then up above the presiding officer's desk is a black screen. When that's activated it has the names of the members on there and it will turn red or green for each name depending on how they vote on each bill. So that's to let the public know how each of their legislators will vote on those different ideas because it's important that the individuals know that their senator, their representative is going to vote the way that they feel is proper or at least have that knowledge so they can call and ask them why they voted a specific way on an issue. Now I wanted to show you my favorite painting in the building. This was done by Mike Wimmer and it commemorates our Statehood Day in Oklahoma. November 16th, 1907 and it signifies and portrays the image when Teddy Roosevelt, the President of the United States, signed into law the Enabling Act, which created Oklahoma as a state. Now, if you look back at the history, Oklahoma originally was slated to be two different states, the state of Oklahoma and the state of Sequoia. But because of the politics at the time, Teddy Roosevelt being a Republican, he did not want to see two states enter the Union that would be Democratic, therefore creating four new U.S. Senators who would be Democrats. So he held out, and through the cooperation and the work they decided to make Oklahoma one state as a whole and you'll see Alpha Alpha Bill Murray over here at the far right and then the other leaders of the state at the time and he is handing over the official document stating Oklahoma has become a state. Now before the bills will go to the House floor they have to go through the committee process and this is an example of one of the committee rooms that we will use uh, in the early part of session and then as we work on the Senate bills that have passed out of the Senate. The TV cameras will record the events that happen so people can either watch at home or listen over their computers. And then we have the TV screens that will have our names and as we vote, just like in the chambers, uh, it will change our names to red or green so the public who is present will be able to see how we vote on each of these different bills. Uh, we also have these microphones where people will press the red button and as soon as the microphone's turned on we'll speak into that and that's what carries the message uh, across the internet and is also recorded for individuals to know what discussion happened in the committees. Now the bills will all be signed to committees and the chairman who sit up here at the front will work with the staff, run the meetings, and then the bills that pass out of the committee go on to the floor for the House and then also the same situation over in the Senate. Now as you're walking around the Capitol, you'll see many great things, but this is, I think, one of the most 
beautiful areas of the Capitol that's underutilized. This is called the Grand Staircase. So it runs from the second floor up to the fourth floor. And in the old days, this was the main entrance to the Capitol building. This area, it's a shame it's been blocked off and it's very rarely used. In fact, the only time these doors are opened is when the governor and the rest of the statewide elected officials are sworn into office after their elections every four years. You will see a line of dignitaries that will walk out this door out to the platform where they're sworn into office. I'm hoping someday as the capital renovations will occur that we'll find a way to open this back up because I remember back when I was in grade school, our first trip to the capital, we all had the chance to come in this door. And it's just an amazing experience to walk up from the front of the Capitol to walk into the building and then just see this image of this beautiful building just waiting right in front of you. Now as you walk around the corner from the Grand Staircase, you're going to see the newest addition to the building as far as a monument, memorial uh, type room. This is called the Hall of Governors. And in here is a bust of each of the previous governors who have served the state of Oklahoma. And you'll see over here my favorite who's probably the most renowned character in the state history, and that's Alfalfa Bill Murray, William H. Murray. Uh, he was not only a governor for the state of Oklahoma, he was the first speaker of the House of Representatives, he was the president of the Constitutional Convention, and he served as a congressman, and while he was in the office of governor, he was nominated as one of the candidates for president of the United States on the Democratic ticket. He did not receive enough votes at the Democratic Convention. That was the convention where uh, Franklin Roosevelt was first uh, nominated to be the president and served. But if you go back and look at the history of this gentleman, it's pretty impressive. And one of the interesting things I like about this is directly across from him is his son, Johnston Murray. The only father and son ticket to serve as the office of governor for Oklahoma and Alfalfa Bill got to be present at the swearing-in when his son became the governor. And it's just interesting to look at the history and how each of these men, and now currently a woman, uh, became the governor and have served the state. Now as you leave the Hall of Governors, you'll walk out and immediately to your right you're going to see this statue. This is a replica of the Guardian, the statue that's on top of the building. The one on the Capitol building is 22 feet 9 inches tall, if I remember right and obviously I've not grown so this one is a smaller size uh, to fit here in this uh, spot in the Capitol but it gives people a chance to see up close what that statue looks like on top of our building and then the Guardian is looking down the hidden staircase now the reason that is called the hidden staircase is because for years it was walled off and if you walk around the Capitol you'll see on the floor there are different spots that are in the floor where it shows where walls have been and no one knows why it was sealed off, but when they did the remodeling, they realized that was a staircase. And so they opened it up and it leads down to our Capitol Visitor Center where tours are conducted on the hour during the days if you will uh, request. And all the tours are done free of charge. We have tour guides that go around and take you on about a 45 minute tour. Guarantee it's a much better one than this one, but I hope you're getting a good idea of some of the high points of the building. Now, as we leave, the Guardian you'll see right here is the office of the Lieutenant Governor. Uh, Todd Lamb is currently our Lieutenant Governor of the State of Oklahoma. One of my relatives in the old days served in the office of Lieutenant Governor, Spencer Bernard from Rush Springs, and I've heard all the stories from the family about how Spencer uh, would work up here when he served with Governor Nye in that office, and it's just an amazing experience to be able to go in and see the history and think about how much has occurred in each of these offices from the lieutenant governor to right next door to the governor's office. In the old days the governor's office went all the way to the back where it was just two offices where the governor's staff would be and then right next door the actual governor's office would be. Since then they've blocked off this entire wing and have put different offices in there with a wall and you have to get buzzed into the back to go back and see whichever staff member or the governor and it allows them to have everyone together. So it's good that they have all of their staff members together and that there is security there to protect people but in a way it's also a shame that it's not like the old days where you can just walk down the hall and see the different things going on and get that close to the offices.
That's uh, just some of the things that we've seen, the changes that have happened since 9-11 and with upgrades in security. The governor next door will have her main conference room and that's where they have the cabinet meetings and also where they will do major meetings with uh, a large number of officials. And then next door is the hallway for the treasurer's office and then down that is where the blue room is located. We'll go down there and take a look at that. Now as you come through this big door into the blue room, you're going to look around you're going to see different pieces of art. This has become a rotating art gallery where the Capitol will select a different Oklahoma artist and they will bring in their work to display for a month. And that's given local artists the opportunity to display some of their work and give our citizens that tour the Capitol building a little bit of a taste of some of the creative ideas the citizens of our state have either put on a canvas or through sculptures or whatever their medium and just take a look at some of the great things that are going on. Now as you go into here, you can see why this is called the Blue Room. The walls are blue, the carpet's blue, the chairs are blue. This is where the governor will hold press conferences, where they do the bill signings, and where the major media events will happen. Uh, you'll often see different groups that will meet in here. Uh, I've had the opportunity to come in here and speak several times when we will have a large conference meeting here at the Capitol and gives them a chance to ask us questions and visit. So we'll be up there at the podium. And this has just been a great room to have here in the building because it's also open for people to have weddings and do private ceremonies. So you can also reserve the fourth floor rotunda and the second floor rotunda and the first floor for different events. And we'll see those happen quite a bit around here. And now we're in what I think is the most beautiful room in the building. This is the chambers for the Supreme Court. This is where our members of the Oklahoma State Supreme Court will meet and hear the different cases that occur whenever something comes before them. The judicial branch for Oklahoma was moved across the street to the History Center, the old History Center building. And the official name of that is the Wiley Post Building. And one of the odd things, I think, and one of the ironic things is we have the only judicial branch in the nation housed in a building named after a convicted felon. Wiley Post was actually arrested in my district for armed robbery, was sent to jail, was released, went to work in the oil fields, and from a workers comp settlement injuring his eye, he bought an airplane, taught himself how to fly, and from that went on to invent the pressurized air suit, and the forefather of the spacesuits astronauts use, and then of course everyone knows the history of how Wiley Post and Will Rogers died in that uh, plane crash back in the 1930s. Now we're going to ignore this sign, don't tell anybody. I want to take you back here and get a close look at the chambers that they use. The court members will have a robing room off to the left and they will come through and these green curtains will protect them from view from the audience and they will all come through at once and you'll have each of the Supreme Court members will sit at their designated seat. Chief Justice Tom Colbert is currently serving in the position of the chief. All of the rest of the justices sit in order of seniority all the way down to the two new ones on the end. And I highly encourage you to come visit and listen in one of the cases if you have any interest at all about how the legal system works in Oklahoma. Uh, it's fascinating. I've been one of the few legislators that has been able to attend a session and listen to the questions. And it's really thought-provoking and very interesting if you have any interest in the law to listen to their discussions. And it gives you a lot of hope that we do have a good system in our country. Now, if you look around at the wall, you'll see different portraits. These are the original members of the Oklahoma Supreme Court. And if you look around, then you'll see over in the corner a photo of the current members of the Oklahoma Supreme Court. Now they're broken down by different regions of the state. So down southwest Oklahoma we'll have a couple of the members, Jim Winchester and Joe Watt. So they're broken down the different regions and appointed by the governor as an opening occurs. And one of the interesting things we have in Oklahoma is the retention ballot where they will be put up, shall we retain this person as a justice? We have never turned away a justice on the ballot, but we do have the opportunity, should that ever arise, where the public feels one does need to leave the bench. Now we're down on the first floor of the building, and if you look up, you'll see all the way to the top of the dome. You'll see up there is our state seal, which also, if you look straight down, there's one on the floor. Now our state seal is unique 
is each state has one and they get to create what they want. But ours, us being the 46th state in the nation, there will be 45 smaller stars surrounding the large star in the middle, which symbolizes Oklahoma, the 46th state. Each of the points of the star signifies the symbol of the five civilized tribes, which is called the five nations now. And then you'll see in the middle a cowboy and Indian shaking hands in peace with the scales of justice in the background. One of the newest things we have here at the Capitol is this wall that is a media wall that shows some of the different areas of the Capitol. And this used to be the old tourism desk, but as it was taken away, they decided to replace it with this, which it provides a great look as you first walk into the building about some of the things you should especially take a look at. Now, if you look down the different hallways, you're gonna see other pieces of art. This hallway that leads out to the parking lot is another rotating art gallery. Now, as you're walking out of the Capitol, when you finish the wonderful tour, you can't forget everything that's outside. Now, this is, of course, one of my favorite pieces, as Long as the Water Flows by Alan Hauser from Apache, Oklahoma. Got to get a plug in for District 65. And then as you look past the Alan Hauser statue, you'll see the 14 flags that have flown over the state of Oklahoma in our flag plaza, which now we just fly one of our current state flags instead of the actual flag from that nation that once held claim to the state of Oklahoma or the territory. And then as you look past the statue and the flags, you'll see the building, uh, beautiful Capitol building with the dome on top uh, the dome was constructed in 2002, one of the newest features to be added on. It was a major project undertaken by the legislature and the governor. And I can't say enough about how beautiful this place is. And of course you can see there's a little need for some repairs going on with the barricades, but I'm hoping that will be fixed soon as we need to reach some kind of agreement to get that funding in place to truly turn this building back into what it should be. And as the building, the people and a great monument and tribute to the history of our state and everything that is good about the state of Oklahoma. So I hope this has been a good tour. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you learned a little bit and look forward to talking to you in the future.